All right, we're gonna do a stability test here on the Pond Prowler. I do wanna say, already making mistakes. I do wanna say I'm 6'1", 170 pounds, so I'm not the biggest guy, and I used to ride semi-professional bikes, so I have really good balance, so I do not suggest testing it, but that's why I'm doing it, and results may vary. But a lot of people say that these boats are stable. A lot of people look at them and it's like, there's no way this thing can be stable. You know, let's figure it out. So I'm just gonna simply start by sitting down and just kind of leaning over and we'll see how that looks. You'll have no stability issues, even with two people leaning over. As you can see, I can lean as much as I want and it's not really moving much. Now we'll try standing back here. Side to side, we'll rock a little bit. Stand and cast. Stand off the bow. How's that look? Does it look any different? Because I'm standing over the bow. Does it look good? Are you asking? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> I thought you were asking like the viewer. <laughs> I was confused. Yeah, I mean, I'm standing on the very front. Yeah, it's staying. I'm actually impressed with that. Let me do that one again closer. Oh, I love this thing. Watch this. I'm standing on the rod holders. Now I'm going to walk on the edges as much as I can. Not a great way to do this. I'm standing on the very edge of the boat. Stay up there very long. It's okay. It's pretty stable. I am shocked. Yeah, I know. I'm not worried about catching a heavy fish now. Because I know I'm not going to tip over. That's crazy. This is pretty stable. That's this crazy. Is, is Just don't get too cocky with it. I'm coming to you. You're coming to me? <laughs> Look at this. This, is, this actually feels really good standing up here like this. Really? Yeah, like right here. You're so happy. It's making me smile. Well, I see people build casting decks for these Come things. Come here. This is my loving husband, everyone. He's a good guy, and I love him so much. He's geeking out. Look at this. Watching you have fun is literally making my day. Like, because I love you so much. <laughs> I'd say it passed with an A+. Plus. You cannot do all this with a flat bottom boat. Yeah, no way. Definitely not with that white one we had before. That look white at boat. Look at this. Look at these waves on me. Yeah, that white boat that we had. Don't get cocky with it, Grayson Alexander. Grayson Alexander. Look at
Okay, I just wanted to give a couple thoughts after the fact and kind of give every category a grade out of 10 because I couldn't really do that on the water. I wasn't mic'd up and it was pretty windy. Anyway, let's start with sitting down. Obviously, sitting down is how this boat was designed and it's gonna get an easy 10 out of 10. And keep in mind, usually I have my wife with me with a lot more gear, fishing stuff, snacks, water bottles, dry storage. Uh, so this is basically testing it at its lightest with one person who is fairly light. So keep in mind that if you have a buddy on here because these boats do come with two seats that it actually will be more stable and uh, just because you're heavier doesn't mean you are necessarily gonna flip it easier just don't stand on the side if you're you know a 250 300 pounder obviously but t uh, sitting is gonna be fine for anybody uh, any comfort level any balance that's gonna be a 10 out of 10 now standing there's a difference between standing and walking Standing is probably going to be another 10 out of 10 compared to anything else of the size, even a wider 10 foot, 12 foot John boat. Standing and casting is extremely comfortable. It only gets a little bit rocky when you're trying to move your feet. Uh, so standing, I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10. Honestly, I could give it a 10 out of 10, but I'm sure there has to be something out there that's a little bit more stable. If there is, I don't know what it is, uh, but standing is very, very comfortable. Walking, on the other hand, there's no real reason you should be walking. The only walking I do is if my seat is in the back and I'm walking to the very front of the boat, and oftentimes I'll put one foot up on the bow just it's kind of a comfortable standing position. Uh, so I'm not doing a lot of walking, and when you are, I mean, where are you walking to? You're gonna take a step or two. So that's not really something that you realistically have to worry about because there's no walking. You're taking a couple steps, and that's perfectly fine because at the end of the day, it's a tiny bow. Anyway, now let's talk about standing over the bow. Standing on the bow is one of the things that I was most concerned with uh, because so I didn't know how it would take it. I didn't know if it would pop up in the back. I have no idea. This is a 130 pound light little boat. And uh, you know, I'm 170, so I'm on the lighter side, but uh, I've been wanting to build a casting deck and I've seen a lot of people do it, but I wasn't convinced that standing where I was standing would actually be stable, feel safe, and not just rock me off the boat. But actually, when I was standing up there, that felt way better than standing on the bottom. So I think a casting deck is definitely, definitely something to think about because it can absolutely handle it. And standing on the stern, I was shocked. I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 because the other tiny 10 foot water, uh, what was it? The water tender from West Marine, uh, you stand on the bow of that and the whole thing's coming up and not the case with this boat, which I'm very impressed with. Next, let's talk about standing on the gun wall or the side. So standing on the side, I was, you know, I've done it before, but I've always kind of like kept my weight. My wife was with me. It's usually whenever like I want to get around her and fish off the bow and she wants to drive or whatever. Uh, but being like as light as it gets with one person, virtually no gear, just me and all my weight on the side, I was absolutely shocked that it almost didn't look any different. In fact, you can see that the other side is barely coming up. I was very surprised and a little bit confused exactly how it works. Um, it obviously has to do with the pontoons. I don't know the science behind it, but I could not believe that I could put 170 pounds of pure downward pressure on the side of this tiny 130 pound boat and it not even feel. I mean, obviously the standing on a tiny little ledge is dangerous, but well, I don't know if dangerous is the right word, uh, but I couldn't keep my balance very well because I was so far on the edge of the boat. Even at one point, I put one foot on the very, very edge, hanging my toes over, kind of over into the water, and it was perfect. I was very, very shocked. This was the test I was most concerned with and the test that I wanted to put on my life jacket, uh, but it definitely passed. Now, let's talk about jumping. You saw me jump about three times, and this is not a situation that anybody would be in, but of course, stress testing a product and seeing the extremes will make you feel more confident to the average consumer. So yeah, I jump sometimes just for fun, but I did it in this video to show like how, how in control I am of my own body movements. I can stand over the bow of the boat, I can stand on the edge of it. I can do whatever. I can jump and not feel like I'm going to fall in, not trip, not fall. You know, it doesn't feel like you're jumping on a trampoline. Uh, I'm very impressed. I don't recommend jumping. There's no reason for anybody to ever jump in any of these boats. But, of course, when you're testing and making videos like these, you want to push it to the limits. Finally, doing all of this while moving. So oftentimes when I'm by myself, I'll kind of like leave my 
controlling motor on setting one or two and just kind of trot along uh, because these are pretty slow boats so I like to keep moving if I can but keep it nice and slow and quiet and sometimes I troll stuff you know I'm standing while moving I'm doing all this different stuff while moving and that doesn't really seem to make too much of a difference because at the end of the day I max out at like three and a half miles an hour so I'm gonna have to give this a 10 out of 10 on stability. I couldn't believe it, I was blown away. I don't think there's been another video like this on YouTube, otherwise I kind of would have you know, seen this coming. So hopefully this video uh, helped you decide on whether to purchase it or whether or not. And if stability is your concern, don't worry about it. Anyway, I'll see you next time.